Sarah Jay Monastery in South India is home to over 2,700 monks. Originally established in Tibet in the year 1419, Sarah Jay has a long history of producing excellent scholars and Buddhist practitioners. It's considered to be one of the three great monastic universities in the Galupa tradition in Tibetan Buddhism. When communist China invaded Tibet, the Tibetans were forced into exile, becoming refugees in India. The Indian government kindly allocated land for the Tibetans to make settlements and to re-establish their monastic universities. Sarah J. Monastery continues to provide an extensive and comprehensive Buddhist education. The monks study hard for many years, striving to actualize the Buddhist teachings. To support this effort, the Sarah J. Food Fund was established by Lama Zopa Rinpoche, the spiritual director of the Foundation for the Preservation of the Mahayana Tradition. Providing a well-balanced diet helps the monks have clear minds and improves the quality of their study. Here, the Sarajya Monastery teaches Buddhist philosophy, and also the, here we teach uh, Tibetan grammar and poetry. And the, uh, most of the monks here studies the philosophy. Because the one thing that you have to know is the studying the philosophy is a, one of the hardest and the toughest subject. When you study the philosophy, you have to combine also the practice. Also, you have to debate to understanding the clearly meaning of the philosophy. You have to debate and practice. After you have to think yourself. So it it should be studied not only by the reading books. It can be studied not only by debating. Yet yeah, it should be studied by the combining all of the other methods, practicings and readings and the debatings. So here they, the you know, all of the monks was mainly they are studying the philosophy, Buddhist philosophy. So they are the five major texts we study over here. Vinaya, Abhidharma, Varatika, Madhyamika, Abhisamaya, Alankar, Namapragya Paramita, Upadesh Shastra. We call that is the main sutra. So here it's like that we have to study 20 years to finish these all five major tests. So the five major tests were is the basic of the all of the Buddhist philosophy and the Buddhist I, uh, I should say the Buddhist Buddhism I, uh, yeah Buddhism. This is the main text of the Buddhism. And in here, what we are studying Buddhism, and the teaching of Buddhism is a, it is something extraordinary. It's not like what we teach us in a school and a university. Because when we study in the schools and university, if we know that text or if we know that the subject, then we don't have to go deeper and deeper. In here, we have to think deeper and we have to learn deeper. We have to practice deeper. When we study the Buddhism, that the first thing is the first we have to change ourselves. This is the most important thing. What we are doing here, when we study the Buddhism, first we will try to change ourselves as a better person change ourselves as a nice or good or kindness to the other. We have to try to change ourselves first. I think that this is the hardest point. So after that, then we will try to understand the, what's the meaning of the, all of the, this uh, philosophy. Then we will try to practice that. We will try to convert the, our studies into the practice. This is the extraordinary thing I think we are doing here. Because in that my experience, I have teached in the university, I am teaching at the Kathmandu, at the university. In the university, I just have to give the lectures one hour or two hours. Students will listen that. They don't have to convert the what, what they have studied into the practice. Their main target is to write on the paper. If, if they got the marks and if they have passed, if they got a degree, then that's enough for them. Here is not that. Here in this monastery, the, all the students have to convert their studies into practice. They, that is the, their final goal. Their final goal. They are not a degree. 
Whenever you go to school and a university, degree is their final goal. In here, the degree is not a final goal. In 1991, Lama Oso Rinpoche, the reincarnation of Lama Tupton Yeshi, the teacher of Lama Zopa Rinpoche, entered Sarah J Monastery at the age of six. Traditionally, when a Lama is accepted into a monastery, offerings are made to the monastery. Lama Zopa Rinpoche emphasized that this was an important opportunity to create extensive merit by making offerings to as many monks as possible. Rinpoche wanted to use this special occasion to make an offering that would be of the most practical benefit to all the monks. The abbot of Sarah J at that time suggested that the daily food needs of the monks was the biggest concern. The monks were having to provide and cook their own meals. Due to practical difficulties, some monks returned to Tibet. To relieve the monks of these hardships and to help them focus on their study, Lama Zopa Rinpoche was asked if he could help. Venerable Kenser Lobsong Sering is very happy with how the food fund is progressing. Uh, before we have to cook meals ourselves, and uh, that time uh, we have very uh, difficult times. So sometimes we don't get kerosene, and sometimes, so mostly at that time uh, we don't have gas. So everybody used to cook with the firewood and or uh, kerosene. So and it's with a stop. So and sometimes it's very difficult to get kerosene, and sometimes we have to stay with the empty stomach, and sometimes uh, we just eat. Uh, uh, black tea and samba, mostly, most of the monks we do like that. If we cook ourselves, then we have very, very rare time to study because even in a day we have maybe three hours to, I mean, uh, repeat our text or to do something like that. Otherwise we go to uh, debating class and after that we have to attend, sometimes we have to attend puja and after that we have to attend class, uh, special tuition class and only maybe we get like two to three hours to repeat our text. Uh, and if we cook, then it takes like two hours, means morning break. If we prepare our breakfast, it will take maybe one and a half hours to uh, prepare and to finish out everything, it will take one and a half hours. Uh, after offering the Mujiz food, we got uh, more time and more uh, opportunity to uh, put our time on study. Our service of food, how it was important. Uh, for example, one comment from Deputy Chutney Limbuchi, his attendant said this is certain. Said that uh, before uh, so many monks came from Tibet, they had those when they came here, and then the, there was uh, difficulties in the <coughs> means of living, uh, in food and these things. <coughs> so, <coughs> very poor conditions, so therefore they could not stay here. So many they left, they returned back to Tibet. And they came here to study, and they went back to Tibet. <coughs> so, so many. But that was just that comes in, the Papa comes in. <coughs> One group uh, in the cell is there are many. There are about 10 groups called come, comes in, so, 10 sections. <coughs> so, so that's just it, it is comes in, he was talking about this. Then there are many other comes in, a similar situation where, uh, <coughs> so early times, <coughs> the <coughs> original monks, you see, <coughs> so the teacher had, uh, you know, his plate of food uh, had to share or five or you know, quite a number of uh, students. It's not, it doesn't make the strong food, but it's just something to live on. <coughs> it's like that at the beginning. <coughs> and uh, so now they don't have to go back to Tibet and they can stay here and, uh, you know, to, and, and they give the opportunity to study, completely study, <coughs> to, be, uh, uh, to be qualified in that. Uh, but uh, the major has uh, the uh, extensive uh, f- teachings of the Buddha, uh, direct from the Buddha, and then the commentaries, uh, Indian pundits, and then also great uh, 
A communal kitchen has been set up by the food fund. Providing cooking equipment and staff has enabled an efficient catering service to develop. There are eight permanent staff working in the kitchen and 58 volunteers. The 58 monk volunteers take their turn helping in the kitchen. Their photographs are placed on the notice board when it is their turn to assist. Fresh vegetables are delivered daily. Fortunately, a wide variety of good quality vegetables are available from local farmers. All the food provided is vegetarian. Tofu, beans, and dal are used as sources of protein. A centralized kitchen means that the nutritional content of the food can be considered. Hygienic food preparation methods also help reduce health problems. The Sarah J. Food Fund currently offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner daily. A set menu alternates every two days. Breakfast is either sweet or non-sweet bread and tea. Lunch alternates between a meal of vegetables and tofu with rice, or a meal of dal including vegetables with bread with a banana. Dinner is either curd and rice, fried rice with vegetables, or noodles with vegetables. There are a lot of vegetables to chop when catering for over 2,700 people. Noodles are carefully made by hand and with the use of special noodle machines. A coordinated team works hard to produce more than 2,700 pieces of bread daily.
Lama Zopa Rinpoche has emphasized that offering the food helps to support the education that the monks are receiving, and it is the education that is most important. Therefore, how wonderful to give financial support to the food fund, which is a significant cause for the monks' abilities to study well. How amazing to be able to contribute to this cause. Usually monks, they have to wake morning around 6 or sometimes 5.30. It depends on the puja. If they have special puja, they have to go at 5.30 a.m. to the monastery temple. So normally they will have in the breakfast around 6 a.m. morning. After that, they have to go to the class, philosophy class. Then morning at 9 a.m., they have to go to the debate up till 11. After that, they will have a lunch, then they will have a break half an hour, then they have to go to again philosophy classes. They will have a debate at 6 p.m. up till 10, 6 to 10. Now it is the, the monks scheduled, daily scheduled. With such a rigorous schedule from early morning to late at night, good fuel for the body and mind is essential. The food fund tries to offer nutritious meals. The monks chant extensive prayers and dedications to benefit everyone, and especially for the welfare and success of those individuals that contribute to the fund. The merit or positive energy from this generosity then continues for as long as the monastery exists. Lama Zopa Rinpoche says the benefits from making a donation to the Sarah J. Food Fund are enormous. The food is the one important for the, all of the humans. So here monks, uh, we are studying the very hard. So the, we need a physical support. So it means we, to, we depend, we are human, depends on the food. So it is very important to have a good meal and a good food. Right now they don't have to bother about the food. They don't know the thing about the food. They don't have to cook food themselves. So they can get the more times to study. They are having the more times to practice. So before FMT is supporting the monks' food, they have to prepare the food and they have to make a food. To, they have to think to two hours every day towards the food. So nowadays they don't have to think like this. They can just go to the temple and they can food. So now they can concentrate more on the studies.
Many of the older Geshis of Sarah J have expressed their gratitude to Lama Zopa Rinpoche and the sponsors. With tears in their eyes, they have told Rinpoche how the food offering has taken the strain off them in caring for their students. These teachers often have the responsibility to take care of their students' physical needs with very limited resources. Many monks have expressed their appreciation that they are now able to attend all the morning debate sessions. The food fund also provides some meals for the 500 younger monks receiving a general education at Sarah J. School in preparation for entering the monastery later. The continued growth and success of the food fund will create conditions for these monks to complete their education and be a positive influence in the world. At Sarah J., the food is nutritious and very auspicious. It's vegetarian. His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama is very much encouraging Tibetans to become vegetarian. Uh, because I have been a vegetarian for the 13 years now, and uh, because and it's not just uh, not just because of being um, myself the vegetarian, but because point of the view of the health and the uh, weather of uh, the South India and the environment of a local community, and within this. The best idea and the best uh, uh, thing is to uh, provide is the you know, vegetarians. I don't know what really people think, the people who are very fond of meat, I don't know. But from my point of view, I think it's really the best to create the uh, vegetarians environment. And uh, of course, uh, uh, it will help uh, not only <laughs> uh, the for own, own health, also it could, uh, is also helping for the animals' uh, relief. Now it is like uh, very luxurious that we, I feel uh, I'm, we're having some lunch or food in some like a uh, higher restaurant. I haven't been in higher restaurant, but um, my friend, they used to tell the food is like uh, we're having in some big restaurants. It's like a party. <laughs> the monks of Sarah J Monastery are living with vows of virtue. They work daily to understand and develop their minds with compassion and wisdom. Prayers are dedicated towards freedom from suffering and the happiness of all beings in the world. Together with your kindness and generosity and the hard work of these dedicated monks, a very positive contribution to world peace on this planet can be achieved. Your financial support of the Sarah J. Food Fund is very important and very much appreciated.